Hi everyone, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Blair and today I'm gonna to be sharing with you all of the products that I'm loving right now. I guess you could call this a favorites video. I don't do favorites videos every month. I kind of go back and forth about whether or not I should just because it takes me a little while usually to call something a favorite, something that I love, but it's been a few months since I've done a video like this, so I have quite a few things to talk about with you, um, and we're going to do this a little bit differently. I'm going to kind of talk and do, I'll show you me applying the product as I'm talking, uh, kind of an overlay style, so let me know if you like that or just what your thoughts are, but I hope you enjoy the video, and let's go ahead and get started. Number one on the list, I'm not going to spend much time on because I have talked this product into the ground, but I can't not mention it in a video about what I'm loving. And it's the Patrick Ta Brow Shaping Wax. I don't know what else to say about this anymore other than I am obsessed with this product. I can promise you the moment I run out of this, I will buy it again. I will never be without this ever again. This is the clear one. I also have the tinted version. I have it sitting right over there. Today I used the clear version. I prefer the clear, but I like both. It's just the ultimate product if you like a fluffy eyebrow. There's nothing that I have personally tried that comes close to this in terms of how it makes your brows look. So I love it so much. I think you can use whatever spoolie you have. I do have the Patrick Ta one that he made to go with it, um, but I also just bought some disposable little spoolies to use because my main tip with this is number one, you have to use it with a setting spray. You have to activate it with some sort of mist or water or something. And number two, you need to use a clean spoolie. Otherwise, you'll get a little bit of product buildup in your brows, which personally doesn't bother me. And you can kind of work with like an eyebrow pencil spoolie or something and kind of get it out. But that's my main tip. Use a clean spoolie and activate it with a mist. The second thing that you guys know I love because I keep, keep talking about it is the NYX Brow Micro Brow Pencil in the shade Ash Brown. These are the two products I have in my brows today, and I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed with this. I already have a backup of this. Honestly, I'm going to use up the brow products that I have, and I'm probably not going to buy anything else. There's nothing I don't like about this. The color, the texture, the price, everything about this is perfect. It works great with this brow wax, and I love it. All right, another thing that I am loving right now is what I have on my eyes. I've mentioned this quite a few times, but it's because I truly, truly love this. And it's the Patrick Ta, um, I can't, I always forget the name, Major Dimension Eyeshadow Palette. And you guys, I freaking love this palette. I don't, I can't pinpoint one specific reason why I love it. I The colors, the creams in it, I love that you can do a really natural eye look. I actually had, I think I'm going to play it here, a clip of me just using the transition shade in the palette and a little bit of this rosy brown and a little bit of this shimmery nude right here and that's it. And then I added a little bit of the dark brown to the outer corner and I added the lid topper shade that I love, love, love right here. It makes your eyelids literally look wet. I love this. 10 out of 10 would recommend. It's definitely a little bit more expensive in terms of eyeshadow palettes, but to me, if you're a neutral kind of person, you need that one in your life. Another eye product that I'm obsessed with, and if you watch my videos, this is not a surprise, it's the Charlotte Tilbury Eye Powder Pencil. I used it today to add a little, I added a little bit in my 
or on my lash line, kind of from the middle of my eye to the outer edge. And then I used my favorite BK Beauty 208 brush to very lightly drag the shadow or the pencil out and make a little baby wing. This has been my go-to. Obviously, if you watch my videos, you know that. Um, and today I actually did put a little bit of it on the outer half of my lower lash line. And then I just smudged it out a little bit with the transition shade in the Patrick Ta palette. The reason I like this more than any other eye pencil right now that I own is because it's just so easy to use because it's a powder. It's not intimidating. In fact, because it's a powder, it's very easy to fix. If you screw something up, you can literally take your finger and kind of blot away what you messed up because it's not so pigmented and intense. You can't mess it up. I'm telling you, you'll love it. It comes in black, I believe, and I think it comes in a shimmery brown as well. I think this is just the plain brown that I have, but absolutely recommend this always, always, and I will definitely buy a new one. You can see mine is getting on the smaller side, so I obviously really love this. I am also obsessed with a drugstore mascara, and I've been trying out a bunch of new ones recently. I have way too many mascaras open, <laughs> to be honest, but the one that I consistently reach for is the one I use today is the CoverGirl Lash Blast Volume. I don't know what it is about this, but on me, this I don't know if I just got a magic tube of this or what, but on me, this mascara does not clump. I don't know what it is. I've had this tube open for a few months. I'm still using it and I love it. I like that you can you can really use one thin coat of it and just be done and get more of a natural look, but you can also build this mascara up and it doesn't get clumpy, which I think is my favorite thing about it. It's not difficult to remove at nighttime, which that's something else that really bothers me. Um, I hate it when I use a mascara and I cannot get it off at night. It drives me insane. It's a great price. I think it's like $6.99, $7.99, maybe less than that, depending on where you buy it. But this is my go-to right now. I'm really loving it. This one is the shade Very Black, but I'm actually thinking when I repurchase this, I might try Black Brown, because I've kind of been experimenting with some Black Brown mascaras, and I kind of like that, actually. So I think when I repurchase, I will do the Black Brown, but totally recommend it. I love it so much. Moving on to some complexion products that I am loving. The first one is the NARS Radiant Creamy Color Corrector. This one is the shade Light. And again, if you watch my videos, you've seen me use this a ton of times. I gotta say, this is, if, if not my favorite, it's in my top two. My other one is Bobbi Brown Corrector in the shade Bisque. But this one is so, so good. And what I would say about this is if you are someone that you're worried about a corrector being too drying or too thick looking under your eyes, I would maybe look into this one from NARS because the formula is very light. It's very creamy. I actually think it's a different consistency than the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer because I have that and love that as well. This one is not so much of a moussey texture. It's very, very liquidy. I don't know if you're going to be able to tell, but it's very pigmented, but very liquidy. So I would say definitely want to use a small amount with this. Keep it just where you have the darkness, and I think you'll love it. This is one of NARS best new releases, in my opinion. This is so, so good. Moving on to a concealer that I am actually really loving. No, it's not Hourglass and no, it's not NARS. <laughs> Believe it or not, it's a different one. And this is a brand that I feel does not get talked about hardly ever. They don't get much love and I don't hear many people talking about this particular 
product, but it's Cover FX, the Power Play Concealer. I bought this at Ulta a few months ago, just on a whim, and I honestly was just kind of curious. I hadn't really heard much about it, and I love this. This is a great concealer. It comes in this, uh, it's not really a doe foot, it's more of like a little round ball, so you really can just dot it on. This is good, you guys, and the shade range is not the biggest, but it's pretty decent. Um, I love this. It gives great coverage. It's very um, creamy, I would say. It's a little more creamy than the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer, a little less thick than the Hourglass Vanish that I love. It's kind of in between those two. I would say you can definitely get this to a full coverage depending on how much you're applying. It gives more coverage, in my opinion, than the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. Maybe a little bit less than the Hourglass. It's kind of right in between. But this is nice. I don't know why no one talks about this. I know they also have the Power Play foundation. I have never tried that. I also don't hear anyone talking about that, but I did want to mention the Power Play concealer because I've really been enjoying it. Moving on to the foundation that I have on today. I feel like what I've seen about this product is kind of 50-50. A lot of people really love it and a lot of people really don't like it, but I personally love it and it's by Dermablend. It's their new CC cream, the Continuous Correction Full Coverage CC Cream with SPF 50. This is actually the first thing I've ever tried from Dermablend and I got it because I was curious to see how it compared to the IT Cosmetics CC Cream. I threw my CC Cream away when I tried this. I think this is so much better than the CC Cream. Still, you get tons of coverage with this and what I will say is you want to be, you want to apply this sparingly. Same as I would say with the IT Cosmetics CC Cream. It is on the thicker side, so if you go in with a ton of this, I can see how it would look cakey. I'll quickly show you um, earlier when I applied this, I did not use much product and you can see Especially in the cheek area, when I go to blend it out, you get a lot of coverage with not much product. So that would be the one thing I would say. Don't apply too much. But I personally think this is really pretty on the skin. It is not a light coverage, though. It's not what you would think when you think of a CC cream. To me, when I think of a CC cream, I think of a tinted moisturizer almost. Like a very light everyday kind of coverage. That is not what this product is. I would say the same thing about the Cosmetics CC Cream and the e.l.f. Camo CC Cream. I like this better than both of them though. The finish, I would say, is natural. It's not matte and it's not dewy. It's really pretty. I do typically set mine with just a little bit of powder, but I have been loving it. I love that it has SPF in it although I always apply SPF underneath my foundations as well. I wear the shade 25N, light one. Something interesting I noticed about this is when you look at the shade range, all of the shades are neutral undertones. They all have ends next to them, which I think is kind of unique, kind of interesting. I can kind of understand where they're going with that because I feel like Obviously not everyone is a neutral undertone, but I feel like neutral is kind of the undertone the most people can get away with. So if you don't know your undertone, I would always suggest going with neutral. Just because you're gonna get a little bit of golden, a little bit of pink, and you're not gonna get too much of one or the other, if that makes sense. But I did want to note that. I would agree on myself, this is definitely more neutral, but I personally really like it. If you like something with a bit more coverage and SPF, I think you'll love this. Moving on to a bronzer that I've kind of rediscovered recently. I have had this for quite a while and I, had, I went through a phase where I didn't use it as much, but I've pulled it out again recently and I just love this, particularly in the summertime and it's 
by Milk. It's the Milk Makeup Matte Bronzer in the shade Baked. And number one, I love the color of this. To me, this is the perfect neutral bronze color. It's not too warm. It's not too cool. It's kind of right in between. It's pigmented, but it's not too pigmented. It's very easy to blend out, and the finish is very natural. I would say it definitely dries down a bit. Not so much to a powder finish, but just more of a natural skin finish. It's beautiful on its own. It's also beautiful with a powder bronzer layered on top of it. And I love this. I hope this product is not being discontinued because I have found that this full size of the baked shade is kind of hard to find right now. I have been able to find the mini size of it, but not the full size. So I don't know. Maybe it's being repackaged. I don't know. I have also found that a few times recently at TJ Maxx and Marshalls, which also makes me very nervous about it. But hopefully it's not going anywhere. I would compare this to the Fenty Cream Bronzer in the shade Butta Biscuit. That one is in a compact, whereas this one is obviously in a stick that you twist up. They are very similar. I would say right now, personally, if I had to choose, I would go with Milk, just because I like the color and the finish just a little bit better. I do like both, but this is the one I've been going to every day and I'm really enjoying it. This next product will not be a surprise again. If you watch my videos, I have talked this into the ground, but it's because I love it that much. Again, from Patrick Ta, this video is not sponsored by Patrick Ta, although that would be a dream come true if it was. I just love his products. But this blush, you guys, this is the, it has a very long name, the Double Take Cream and Powder Blush in the shade She's That Girl. It comes in four shades. I have two of them. I have this one, and then I also have the... The one that's a little more of a berry wine color also comes in a bronze and more of a peach. This is the best one, in my opinion. This color is everything. It is everything. I actually used this, well, I used it today on myself, but I used this on my mom as well when she was here a few days ago. and. She has a much darker skin tone than me. She has more of an olive complexion. And even on her, that color looks so pretty. I just feel like it's so versatile. I love that you get a cream and a powder, very similar to the cream shadows and powders you get in the eyeshadow palette. I love this. Another thing that is very unique about this to me is you can go in with powder and then cream or cream and then powder and you can do it either way it does not affect the finish or anything like that today i did do cream first and then i applied the powder over it in fact let me apply a little bit more this is the powder that i'm using i mean it is so pretty you guys and something else I like about his blushes in particular is they're very sheer so not in a bad way but I think that's very that's very appealing to me in blush because it's not intimidating you don't have to worry about going in with way too much and then trying to fix it and all that his blushes are very sheer so you can build them up you can get as much intensity as you want which I love about it as well. I can't say enough good things about this. I know this shade, I wanna say, is sold out in multiple places right now. I'd have to double check, but if you get your hands on this, I totally, totally recommend it. I actually have been loving a powder recently, and that is unusual for me. I'm not a huge setting powder person, but I love the Kosas Cloud Set Powder. I have been reaching for this on a daily basis, and again, that is not common for me. I am 
definitely the person that sometimes just does not use any powder on my face at all. I have just never found, I have a few powders that I like, like the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush. Um, I have like the Pat McGrath Under Eye Powder that I like, but I don't have like a Holy Grail powder or I haven't had one. But honestly, lately, this has been it for me. I love this, love this so much. I'm almost wondering if I like it because it kind of reminds me of the Hourglass Ambient Powders, but different at the same time. The Hourglass Powders give you a very dewy kind of look. This doesn't give you a dewy look, but it also doesn't totally mattify your skin either. It's somewhere in between, but yet it has a little bit of a blurring quality to it. So where I notice it the most, the blurring aspect is like right here on the sides of my nose. Because if I don't have a ton of issues with pores being noticeable, but where I do have them, which is like right here beside my nose, I feel like this just kind of lightly blurs them. But you can still see a glow through the powder as well. Like you can see that my skin has a definite glow to it, but it doesn't look oily or like I need to powder. I can't say enough good things about this. I, as of right now, I'm gonna keep using it, but I'm thinking when I run out of this, I will be repurchasing it. I really, really enjoy this. I have a few lip products that I am also very much obsessed with right now. One of them is this, and okay, at first when I bought this, I really thought, okay, I'm probably not going to see any difference with that. I don't know why I feel the need to buy it, but I bought it anyway, and it's the Buxom Plump Shot. It's new. It's a collagen infused. They call it a lip serum, and honestly, I did not have high hopes for this. I thought, you know, it's just gonna be like buxom lip glosses. You might get a little bit of a tingly feeling, but I didn't think it was gonna do a whole lot. But I was wrong. This is the first product like this that I've tried and I feel like it actually does something. It does have the tingly feeling to it. It gives you that kind of, um, the only way I can think to describe it is it's just a tingle. It's not an intense tingle by any means, just in my opinion, but I notice a difference, particularly on my top lip, because my bottom lip is decently sized. I mean, it's not large or anything, but my top lip is definitely a good bit smaller. And when I use this, I mean, I don't look like I have lip injections or anything like it's not that extreme, but I just notice on the sides here a slight bit of plump, which makes me very, very happy. I am terrified of needles anyway, so I would, I don't think I would ever have the courage to get lip filler anyway, but I do really enjoy how this looks, and I've used it two different ways. Sometimes I use it first on my lips and kind of let it set there for a while and then when I go and apply lip liner and lipstick I kind of wipe off the excess and I'm kind of left with that little bit of plumping. I also sometimes top my lipstick with this and it gives you a little bit of shine and it kind of plumps your lips after you've applied lip products. So I use it both ways. I also think that this slightly I'm not gonna say it diminishes lines on your lips because I don't think anything does that, to be honest, but I do think it kind of plumps out your lips a little bit. So if you are someone that has a lot of texture on your lips, you might really like this. It's not a miracle worker, but it's the best product of this kind that I've tried. So I did wanna mention this. I do have it on my lips today, as well as this. This I've mentioned a bunch and I just wanted to mention it again. I'm still loving it. It's from Revlon and it's the Sup Revlon Super Lustrous Shine Lipstick in the shade number 20 Nude Illuminator. This, how I would describe it, is a tinted, a pretty tinted lip balm. So that is it right there. It's very, very shiny, very thin, very moisturizing. It 
honestly reminds me of the Fenty, I think they were called the Slip Shine lipsticks, the ones that come in the gray tube. I have several of those and this is better and it's like half the price. This color in particular is my favorite. They have a bunch of them. I have more than one of these. I have one that's in my drawer here in my vanity in my everyday makeup drawer and then I also have one in my purse that I keep with me. It's just a really easy thing to throw on if you want to just put something quick on your lips and not think about it. This I love so much. One more lip product I had to mention because I had mentioned in a previous video I rediscovered this in my collection recently and I'm obsessed with it and it's the NARS lip gloss in the shade Chelsea Girls. I saw Lisa J use this in a video. Maybe it was her favorites video, her most recent one. I cannot remember. But she was talking about how pretty this gloss is. And when I saw her using it, I thought, I'm pretty sure I have that lip gloss, but I never use it. So I went through uh, my drawer and I found it and yes, I do have it and this is I would say a pinky beige lip gloss, but it's the only NARS gloss that I have but this color is so Pretty it pairs so well with every single thing. I've used it with I love it It's not sticky or thick feeling on your lips. I love it so so much Today I have on, um, well, I just put it on my lips. Before that, all I had on was the Revlon lipstick and the MAC lip pencil in Subculture. And then I did prime my lips with the Buxom Plump Shot. But I did want to mention this gloss because I've been loving it. Also, if you're wanting it, check Marshalls and TJ Maxx because I actually got mine at TJ Maxx a few months ago Probably like six months ago or so But I found one of these just last weekend at TJ Maxx and actually I made my mom buy it Because I used this on her when I did her makeup and it looks so pretty She bought it as well It's a really good gloss. So if you find it, I think there it's like $7.99, $8.99, which is a great price. Pick it up. You'll love it. Now I wanted to just quickly mention a few non-makeup products that I've been loving. Let me know if you want me to include this kind of thing. If not, I can nix it the next time I do one of these videos. But I did have a few random things I wanted to share. The first is this. And mine is really gross looking because I just took this out of my shower. But this is the Tree Hut Vitamin C Shea Sugar Scrub. And the Tree Hut scrubs you've probably heard of. They're very popular. They come in tons of different scents. And I've tried a few of them. This one is my favorite, the Vitamin C one. This one actually has the uh, AHAs in it, so alpha hydroxy acids. So it's supposed to help if you struggle with um, KP. I can't think of the name, but it's when you get little bumps on the back of your arms. And I have always kind of had that, and I never really knew what to do about it. Um, and this really helps. It is just a great body exfoliator. So I use this like once or twice a week usually when I'm shaving, so before I shave my legs or whatever, I will use this all over my body. And I love this. I've tried tons of scrubs, but this one is, the, is my favorite one I've tried. And the smell has a very orangey smell. That's what it smells like to me, at least. It smells like, kind of like orange juice, but in a good way, it's a very fresh smell. I don't know. I've really been enjoying this. I'm always looking for new scrubs. I've tried tons. I've tried the Trader Joe's uh, lavender scrub. I've tried the, let's see, the Boom Boom scrub. You know, the Sol de Janeiro one. That one's very expensive. It smells good, but so expensive. This one is, I can't remember, like $7.99, $8.99. Totally worth the price though, and I'm definitely going to buy a new one of these um, when I go to Target later. 
because I love this. I use it constantly. Next is a very, very random uh, love that I have right now. And my mom is the one that introduced me to these, but they are these hair ties by the brand Goody, and they're the Ouchless Damage Free Hold Hair Ties. Soft and seamless, damage free, strong hold hair ties. I believe I got these at Target, but this is the best hair tie I have ever used. Number one, they do not lose their shape. Here's one here. They also don't feel like they're like cutting off circulation to your head. You know how sometimes you double wrap or triple wrap a ponytail? It can kind of feel like you're like pulling at your head. It's so tight. These do not feel like that, but yet they really hold your hair. And I have tons of hair. I need something pretty thick to hold mine. Otherwise, it it does not work. I have too much hair, my hair is too thick. I have to use something pretty thick and durable. These are the best. And I actually used to buy the really expensive um, silk hair ties. I like those because I feel like they didn't damage my hair, but those stretch out. They stretch out and then they're really hard to use. These do not. They never hurt my hair. I don't feel like I'm pulling out my hair when I'm taking these out. Sometimes I will even, like when I do the low buns that you've seen me do sometimes, I will use two of these and double wrap them twice and it holds my bun. And that's saying a lot from me because like I said, I have very thick, heavy hair. Right now it's not as heavy because I cut so much length off of it, but before when I had really long hair, my hair is hard to hold. I mean, it takes a strong hair tie to do it. So I did want to share these. They're very cheap, like four or five dollars. And you get, um, I think this had eight in the pack, but I haven't snapped one or lost one or anything like that. I love these. So I did want to share them if you're looking for a new hair tie. Okay, one more really random thing I wanted to share is this. This is by the brand Seche Vive. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but it's uh, an instant gel effect top coat for your nails. And they actually make a non-gel version of this, just a clear top coat. I've had that before, but I was in Ulta one day and I saw this and I saw it said gel effect top coat and that was really intriguing to me because I love how when you get your nails done they have that shiny kind of glossy finish. I just really love that look and I have recently stopped getting my nails done like right now I have nothing on my nothing on my nails at all. Um, so I've been trying to be better about just putting something quick on them at home just to save a little bit of money because getting your nails done gets expensive. If you get it done all the time it's expensive. So I got this and this number one dries almost instantly, which I love because if you're like me, when you do your nails, I am terrified that I'm going to do them and then accidentally bump my hand or do something to screw them up. And then you basically got to start all over. This dries so quick and it does have that glossy, gel look. It looks just like that on top of your nails. I really, really like it. If you do your own nails at home and you need a new top coat, this I would definitely recommend. I liked this one a lot better than the original clear top coat. That one was fine, but the dry time on this is really good and the glossiness on top of your nail is really, really pretty. And that is gonna be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know if you want me to continue to do favorites videos. Like I said in the intro, I just can never decide if I should do these videos monthly or if I should do them every other, every few months. I feel like it, I don't know, I feel like it's a little better to wait a few months in between and kind of accumulate things before I do one. I just don't feel like I have enough things that I could say are favorites every single month. But let me know what you think. Maybe I could just do quick 
favorites videos every month with just a few products but let me know what you want to see and thank you so much for watching make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it please subscribe if you haven't already and I would really appreciate it if you would share my videos with your friends your family anyone that you think would enjoy my content here on YouTube thank you so much for being here and supporting me I will list and link all of these products in my description box please also go follow me on Instagram at simply.blair I'll see you next time remember simply be you bye